Um, happened a number of years ago when I was working as a busy paediatric nurse. On average, I'd be washing my hands around... ...but has zero calories and harbours no bitter aftertaste like many other sweeteners do. Today, we have turned those... ...limited. I'm seeking investment of €60,000 and I offer 10% of shares of my company. And the magic market, fantasy market, is huge. Hundreds of millions of people spending... That's a joke of an offer. To want a quarter of what you've built. We might have a long discussion about... Number five, nurse and bidding war. An unprecedented bidding war erupts on Dragon's Den over a cosmetics company providing free hand care products for NHS nurses. Johnny and Antonia Phillip run a skincare brand called Nursum, which they want to make into a global business. And actually led to me taking two weeks off work in order for them to recover. Whilst Antonio was off work, we do people with hard working hands. So working with some expert cosmetic laboratories, this is the range that we've developed and it tailors. But not wanting to lose sight of the reason that we set up Nursum in the first place, we created to a nurse, midwife or other healthcare professional in the NHS. And it would be an absolute honour for a drag. With every product purchased, Nursum gives a month's worth of hand cream to a nurse or midwife. The Nursum business was born on a nursing ward when co-founder Antonia often came home with sore, cracked and bleeding hands from the constant hand washing needed to keep her young patients free from infection. In 2009, it became so bad that she was unable to work for several weeks. Knowing that this problem affects nearly all nurses, Antonia and her husband Johnny started working on a hand cream formula. They wanted the product to be effective, natural and something nurses could use repeatedly throughout a busy shift. Yeah. And I love you and this enough to make you a very, very, but I want 5% of the business. Okay. Okay, thank you, Deborah. Thank you. This was all pre-COVID that you set this up. Yes. It was, it was, yeah. But COVID has definitely accelerated the business. Balance out, Ted. I don't think the way that people view hand washing will are in need of our products. You're good. <laughs> thank you, too. Your numbers are good. Your pro so for seven years, they worked with a group of British nurses, laboratories and Newcastle Science City to create a range of therapeutic formulas. After asking for £75,000 for a 1.5% stake in the company, all the Dragons make offers starting with them wanting 10% but eventually negotiating to a 5% stake going down to 3% when their money is paid back. Presenters Evan Davies described it as one of the most impressive equity climb downs in Dragons Den history. They eventually choose to work with healthcare expert Tej Lalvani, who tells them that he is really excited to work with them and is already impressed. Uh, happy to go with that. Yeah, look, I mean, it is important to choose who you think is going to be the right. I'd be happy to do that. OK, thank, thank you. Thank you. I think this stopped being just a business conversation about 10 minutes ago. Um, so before we even say this, we just want to thank you all, because I know, like, we all owe you, like, a max accept your offer. Yes! What? Great stuff, guys. High five in the air. <laughs> High five. <laughs> this was definitely a good idea. As of 2021, they have helped over 175,000 nurses and midwives and sold more than 1.5 million pounds worth of skincare products. Number four, Food Fight. Business gurus Peter and Tucker clashed as they fought to seal the deal for a business deal with entrepreneur Jack Nyber, the CEO and founder of the sugar-free company Pure Sweet. He aims to bring the highest quality of sugar-free products while not compromising on taste and staying 100% natural. Jack Nyber, I'm the founder and CEO of Pure Sweet. I'm asking for £75,000 in sugar-free products while not compromising on taste and staying 100% natural. This company is fast growing and I look forward to one of you joining this ex Watermelon sherbet. So this is sugar-free zero. Jack impressed the Dragons with his 1.5 million pound profit and is on course to turn a massive 1.4 million pound profit over this year. Tension built as Peter and Tukar offered identical offers. Tukar told Jack he has a black book with accounts open in all the retailers, but Peter cut his fellow investor off sharply by asking, what food brands have you got in retail? This set off a back and forth that was going to get pretty brutal, but Peter interrupted and said, when it comes to food across a wide range, nobody has done more. Okay, um, which would be Peter and Tej. Is any of the other dragons? Look, Peter and I... Right. 
Jack, I need a sugar fix. <laughs> okay. Because I do believe in you. I think this is going to be... In that case, I'll accept your offer. Yes! Yay! Jack admitted he was hoping to get two dragons, ideally Peter and Tej, who ended up happy to agree to 5% each. Number 3. Health and Safety A Mallow-based entrepreneur who started up his own publishing company after being made redundant sparked a bidding war with the dragons. Marek Sipotowski was seeking 60,000 euros to help expand his company, which publishes health and safety manuals in the UK and on digital markets. That's sure. We achieved big success in Ireland, and I think we're ready to do digital market as well as published books. I'd like to welcome any questions you may have. Thank you very much. 335,000. Um, half of that would be gross profit, and half of it again would... Percentage is bought directly by the company, or percentage is bought by trainers. Uh, uh, Merrick told the Dragons that since setting up Health and Safety Publications Limited with his wife, he has worked 19 hours a day, seven days a week, to make the company successful. After a brief introduction, Merrick threw himself at the mercy of the Dragons with Ramona Nicholas questioning him about his sales figures. I'm very much in the training business. If I was to get involved, I'd want to get very involved because I think you need a bit of strategy for what we do. Uh, but um, it's great to see a profitable business uh, with... And um, I, I, I am going to make you an offer, but. I. I want more than 10%, 10 percent doesn't really on my own, but I want 60,000 for 25 percent. Okay, thank you very much. Peter Merrick told her that the company realized sales of 335,000 euros last year, a figure that had already increased by up to 50 percent over just three months. Gavin Duffy wanted to know about Merrick's core market, while Eamon Quinn was impressed with the success the company had achieved in an area that he didn't consider ripe for innovation. Merrick told Barry O'Sullivan his most popular production was a first aid manual, which has sold around 22,000 copies in a couple of months. Peter Casey wanted to know what inspired Merrick to set up his publishing company, and Merrick explained that he and his wife were working for a consultancy company but lost their jobs in the recession. He added that if he were to secure the 60,000 euros, he would spend it on hiring a graphic designer. While Ramona, Gavin and Eamon were clearly impressed with Merrick's pitch, they ruled themselves out leaving Barry and Peter to slug it out. After the offer and counteroffer, Merrick decided to go with Barry's offer for 60,000 euros for 15% of the company, working its way back down to 10% over time. Number 2. Magic Whiteboard Mr. and Mrs. Westwood went into the den seeking 100,000 pounds for an original 15% of their company Magic Whiteboard to scale up their business. It contains 25 perforated sheets. It's 20 meters in length. And you can see, you write on it like a traditional whiteboard, and it erases in exactly. The pair essentially created a statically charged portable whiteboard, which sticks to any flat surface without the need for extra adhesives, otherwise working just like an ordinary whiteboard. Before heading into the heated den, the couple thoroughly prepared themselves and even secured the exclusive distribution and selling rights for Magic Whiteboard. The Westwoods shared that while they had been selling around 50 rolls of Magic Whiteboard every week, they had received one of their largest international orders of 472 rolls to Norway. Their expected turnover of 150,000 pounds for the year and looked to profit 1.4 million in only their third year of business. Hammering the first nail in the coffin in extravagant fashion, Jones took to writing on the couple's whiteboard that he was out of this deal after once again branding it ridiculous. Duncan Bannatyne also added his concerns that the market wasn't large enough to sustain a profitable business. Despite his worries, Bannatyne was the first dragon to make an offer. The only concern was that it was £50,000 for 20% of the business, half the amount the couple was looking for. Deborah Meaden quickly put forward her bid for the business, offering the same as Bannatyne. Paphitis then threw his hat into the mix, offering the entire £100,000 the couple had asked for, but in exchange for a staggering 40% equity. On that condition, I too will make you an offer. There is some added benefits having Deborah go down to 20% for 50,000, and Deborah has the other 20% for 50,000. Desperate to keep herself in the game, Meaden then made an additional offer to partner with Paphitis. Compromising with both dragons, 
the couple walked away from the den with 100,000 pounds for 40% equity shared between the two dragons. Number 1. Magic Wand It's just the thing that Harry Potter could use while watching TV at Hogwarts, a wand that changes channels or turns down the volume at the flick of a wrist. And this buttonless remote control certainly seems to have magic properties because it attracted one-off, if not the largest investments in the history of Dragon's Den. Entrepreneurs Chris Bernardo and Richard Blakesley accepted a £200,000 offer. We're here today to ask for £200,000 investment for a 10% stake in our company. Design, development, electronics development. Richard and I would get together and make some really magical products. I'll and this is it. So it looks pretty much as you'd expect for a wizard's wand. Play some music. You can rotate it to turn the volume up. It'll stop the music. In fact, you can control almost anything in your house. So, for example, I can turn on the TV. From tough talking Duncan Bannatyne for their Chimera wand on the hit show. Most TV viewers might not be aware of the need for such a highly sophisticated device to replace the remote control, but users will be able to change channel, volume, or pause a DVD by using one of 13 different gestures which wave the 14 in a device. Father of Four Chris revealed that he was terrified when all five dragons offered to invest. The dragons offered a combined 900,000 pounds, but Chris and Richard from Bishop Stortford accepted 200,000 from Bannatyne, the largest deal made by one dragon in quite some time. Chris and Richard opted to sell 20% of their business to Bannatyne for 200,000 pounds, which reduces to 10% if they make 1.2 million profit in their first year. Thank you very much indeed. Obviously, it's the consumer strongest connections in that market. You're wrong to assess that, anyway. Sorry? It's tricky because then I think to myself, what's my maximum upside? Yeah. If you believe you're going to make 600,000, my offer is far, far, far better than Pierce. Bannatyne thanked Chris and Richard for accepting his offer and admitted it feels sweet to be picked ahead of his four rivals. That's all for today's video. See you next time.